I am so excited to bring on Kelly Herrick, my friend and a client that I've been working with for the last year in my mastermind program and an amazing, talented artist who has some really incredible programs that she's offering. We are just going to have a fun little chat today. Kelly, will you please introduce yourself? Oh, that's so kind of you to welcome me in. Thank you, Kelly. My name is Kelly. We've got a double whammy Kelly on this episode. There you go. Two Kelly. Yeah. So yeah, I'm Kelly Herrick, and as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm a UK-based artist, and I just love to empower people to step into their creativity with optimism and a sort of belief in magic and what's going on in the world, you know, kind of bringing people out into nature through their art is what I'm all around. I know, I love it. Like, I'm very drawn to what you do because it speaks to me as, you know, as a creative, as a woman, as somebody who likes to feel connected to the earth and and just nature in general and i just love that you're like bringing all those elements together and helping people find their way again in this world because i mean some of us have really lost touch and i love that you're bringing that power back yeah it, it's like my holy trinity so i've got like creativity nature magic and i think if we can weave those into the world then it will be an amazing place and everybody can do that so I really believe in the power of creativity for people. And for me, that comes out through art. And for other people, it comes out through different means. But I just love to kind of connect with people. And yeah, and particularly, let's say, particularly women of my age and older, because, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's something really, something really powerful about when we get to this age, isn't there, of like rediscovering, reconnecting, and finding out what we really want to do and what our true purpose is. Yeah. Um, and the creativity really taps into all that passion for me. Yeah, that that really is this time in our life where for most of us, not everyone, but we've gone through the, the childhood and the career. And now we're at this point of, hey, I finally know who I am. Like it really takes a long time. And then when you start tapping into that, you're like, oh, wait, now I also have all these superpowers because I'm far more confident. I have far more clarity and want that purpose and that like it's time like your your offer. A lot of times you like to talk to the, the woman who's been in corporate who is now ready to be in touch again. So, you know, taking that time out of our crazy, hectic, busy schedules to be more. Yeah, because that was me, right? So I kind of talked to the women who are and were me, I guess, in a lot of ways. But yeah. I just think that um, not only have we got all those extra superpowers, like you said, but we've all made so many more mistakes by our ages and we can learn from those, they're gifts. And I think uh, sometimes we get to that big job, whether it's in our own business or in a corporate world or in an organization, and we get there and go, oh, this, this is it. They, oh, they, this. And it's kind of like, life? yeah, what else is there? And then you, that's when you start to look around and you start to really think about what's important. And from my experience, this nature connectedness and allowing room for magic and this creative expression of what have you got to say about the world? What do you want to express? what beauty do you want to create? Those are three powerful, powerful things to bring together for people. And definitely love the direction that you've taken your whole art voice and career, and then all of your previous experience and how you've been developing it over the last year. It's been really such a beautiful thing for me to see unfold and to be able to work on with you and our small little mastermind group. It was like, Certainly the highlight of my year last year was working with our little group and watching you make decisions and seeing where your strengths are and who you really want to work with. And I think that's really been a big eye opener too, because where you started when we first were, were first starting out a whole year ago in January of 2022, <laughs> and then where you are now with this realization that you are so multifaceted and there are so many elements of you that you can bring it together to make one really creative interesting business out of it right yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. realization along the way yeah that was a real sort of truth bomb that you helped drop into my life <laughs> through this <laughs> this work that we did together because um obviously like a lot of people in this space i think you start out making your own art and you think yeah i'm going to be an artist and art and painting and that's my thing and all my craft you know and you, you really focus in and you go all in on that and that's amazing wonderful journey but what I came to realize through working with you and the other people in the mastermind was my art is actually like this really biodiverse ecosystem, you know, to tap into my nature analogy, that art and making art is a very much a big part of what I, I do and who I am, but it's one part. 
and also teaching and coaching people and taking people on retreats and collaborating with people and writing and, and being part of artistic communities and doing things in my community. These are all parts of that ecosystem and it didn't have to just be one thing. It's one thing that powers many things. Exactly. So that, that was magical. It, it's been really exciting to, because this was like my whole hope to begin with is to pull in all of those things that make you who you are, how you have all these different things that you're very good at and that you see in like such a different spectrum than maybe other people would. And it's not that you're doing all the things, what you're doing is taking all those things and bringing them in to this one way of creating a forward motion with it, like a system where you can help bring out that creativity in women with the magic, with the nature, with the writing, with the soul searching, with the coaching. And like you said, in-person retreats and all of that, it becomes this one really beautiful business. And I know you're still developing it, but yep. you have done some fun things over the last year. You released your very first art course. Yay. And you did a you did an in-person retreat that was sold oh, out, which was, was so fabulous. Good. Yeah, it was. And you narrowed in on your your niche, if we were to say, you're like your real ideal client and way of serving. And I love that all that has happened for you while at the same time growing your social media and your email list so that you actually have those people that you can create relationships with. Yeah. And, and to be honest, like many people, you know, I have a day job right now as well, a part-time day job, which is very aligned and creative, but it's still, um, it, it still takes your time. And I actually love it. And it's a lovely loop for me to be in between these two positions, but I've done all those things you've just said as a side hustle or as a secondary thing. So just imagine what people out there can create um, for themselves with a creative business. If, if you can focus even more on it, you know, this is some really amazing things that have happened, but you know, if you've even got more time and resource, wow, you know, you can create some incredible things. But you have done a lot, even. Oh, I've done a lot. <laughs> I've done a lot. You've done a lot. Even in short... I mean, like you're, let's talk first. I want to, I want to like backtrack all the way. If you don't, okay. want all the way to your beginning, because this is what to me makes you so magical is that you see the world in a different way from where you come from and even the job that you currently do right now. Yeah, so um, I was born into generations of traveling showmen uh, in the British fair, which I guess you would call carnies in America and gypsies, Romany gypsy and Irish traveler I've recently found out as well. So all of my heritage for many, many generations has been traveling people. And I didn't live in a house until I was eight when I went off to Hogwarts boarding school. <laughs> I didn't go to Hogwarts, but it's kind of like that. We had cloaks and stuff. It was cool. I grew up in a really um, roaming, free spirited, independent kind of atmosphere. And aesthetically, I grew up in a super colourful, rich, multi-sensory atmosphere of movement and sound and colour and noise and all of these things. And I think that's absolutely informed my artistic choices. You know, I, I paint landscape and nature inspired work, but I take the colours to the maximum and I'm very expressive and I put a lot of movement in there. So, so that's definitely informed the artistic side but also from the business side the entrepreneurial flair of like not being afraid to work hard and not being afraid to put myself out there and maybe having a bit of a gift of a gab as we'd say in England I don't know if you know that saying but kind of having a yeah. way with words um all of those things um and it's an incredibly magical sort of childhood and people see it as magical because you know for one week of the year the fair would come to town especially you know 30 35 years ago when I was younger and all of a sudden it transports and transforms everyone. You know, you take a sleepy village and all of a sudden this colorful, noisy, imaginative world descends on them. And it's like the midnight circus just appears. You know, it's, oh, it's really yeah. incredible. That book's amazing, right? So I kind of have all of that background feeling in me, um, which then I, I kind of take forward. And, and even now I'm a creative strategist in a theme park design company <laughs> so I'm yeah, kind of worlds collide I know you keep finding the same I think there's when there's something very innate about who we are we just keep we're drawn to it and I love yeah. that, yeah, the fact totally. that you were raised in the fair and now you do marketing and theme park designs for all these like really fun playful businesses yeah it's that it's that kind of journey and and seeking of wonder you know, I'm, I'm always seeking wonder and magic and 
I don't necessarily mean like unicorns and card trick magic. I mean more like natural green mama earth magic for me personally, but I'm always seeking wonder and imagination. And I can really see those themes like come all the way from my childhood to what I do now to my own business, my own art style, even the books I read and the movies I watch, you know, you can see who I am from my Netflix profile. <laughs> you know, it's really obvious. It's full of like Wes Anderson and nature documentaries and stuff like that. So, yeah. I love that. Tell me if, if you don't mind, like I never asked you this before, but what, what did you do when, I mean, up until eight, you were traveling around with the fair, what yeah. roles did your parents have or what did you, did you ever get to perform at a young age? Well, it wasn't so much performance. It was more, I suppose it was kind of having your fair day face. So fair day is like the big day where you'll take hopefully some some money, you know, to, to help you move on to the next fair. So you always had like a bit of a, a game face on, but you, you do everything and, and anything on, mm -hmm. on the fair. And I think that helps you later in life be flexible and agile around your own business or around the roles that you kind of pick up in your own family or with your community. But my role, I was much smaller than my two older sisters. So they're seven and 10 years older than me. So, so one of their jobs was to look after me, which they didn't ever like particularly. But we were kind of feral and quite wild. So, you know, the amount of candy floss, uh, cotton candy that I've spun will be in the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. And when I was very small, we used to have a ghost train, uh, like a haunted house ride. And we're talking early 80s, late 70s here. So I would dance on the front of that. I don't think I was supposed to, because I don't think it was particularly scary watching this little kid dance, but I just loved it. So you kind of do the things you need to do, but also you do the things you love to do. So you find different fair families will, will gravitate to different things, whether that's food or rides or arcade games or whatever mm -hmm. it is. So, um, so yeah, fascinating, really. That is really fascinating. And now with the, the work that you currently do, it's part time, but it is a full, like, like you call it the honey pot. <laughs> it's, it's a good job. It keeps you stuck there. And there is this dream of having your own business and maybe moving away from working for somebody else. But at the same time, it's a really cool job. You've even gotten to travel. You get to see behind the scenes of the way a lot of things that we'd only dream of knowing. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, so I call it the honey pot because I love honey and bees are amazing. And <laughs> the people I work with and the industry I'm in are amazing and I love them and I feel so loyal to them. And it's even making me feel a bit awkward, you know, like odd just talking about them in this way now because I will eventually want to, to create more of my own independent life. You know, I'm heading towards 50. Do I want to still be working for someone else in my 50s and 60s? Probably not. So I don't know what kind of trajectory I'm on, but it, at the same time as being tasty and wonderful and full of great people, sometimes I think when you are being served by having such a creative, amazing job, it can kind of stop you taking that leap. You know, it's not painful. It's wonderful. So I think when, I'm, when I've been in pain before, I've made bigger decisions. Mm -hmm. Like when I, I took a step away from being in a corporate role to come to this role I'm in now, dropped quite a big chunk in salary and changed our lives quite measurably. And it was because I was more in pain, I think, than I am now. So that's why it's a honeypot. It's wonderful, but it's also a bit sticky. So <laughs> it's kind of both. And I'd be honest with them and say the same things to them. So, you know, um, but yeah, it, it's also like this great feedback loop. So mm -hmm. being in a creative job and exploring the themes and the concepts I do for that can really inform some of the art and some of the things I explore in my art really inform some of the things that I work on as well. So yeah, it, it's, it's great in many ways. I also think that your experience working in corporate and being like, as you were saying, prior to the job you have now, being in a lot more pain because it was not enjoyable. So I think there's this like huge ability for you to relate to the people that you work with, to the women that come to your retreats or into your courses. You understand that sometimes we don't always have the choice to leave the corporate job behind, mm -hmm. but there's ways to nurture ourselves with creativity, with writing, with communing with nature, with finding the magic in everyday life. And so I see very clearly, and I think which was part of that big aha for you, is where you've been to where you understand and know now and how you want to be able to bridge that gap for other women, especially in this part of our life where we want more meaning. And so I think, you know, that's just really to me a very beautiful like story arc, if you will. And mm -hmm. all of us have that story arc. All of us have something remarkable that we've been through in our life that has led us to where we are now to help us make decisions as to what to do next. 
And for yeah. you, I really think this is a calling. Like you've been through all these different evolutions of your life. And here you are now with this realization that you really have the ability to touch into the hearts of women who need this kind of support. And I, I just, I'm so excited for you. Like, I, I love, I mean, that's one of my favorite things is just watching all of this come together and see you lit up with this path. And I know it's a honey pot to be in the job that you're in, but I think it'll take, it'll just take the time it needs to take before you know when the time is to transition then to full time working your own business. But there's still some big goals that you have moving forward anyway. Yeah. And I mean, the world has changed around me so much as well. So as well in, as going through those sort of big life change, changing moments, positive ones and challenging ones, you know, we've had COVID and a pandemic and economic challenges in the world. We've obviously known about climate change for a long time. But if you consider the last sort of five years of the, the sort of buzz and the information we're receiving around climate change, that's that's changed. Obviously, civic things that are changing, social mm -hmm. things that are changing. So I feel like against the backdrop of all of those things, as we're what you know coming into our queen or even our hag which i love that word and i say it in a really positive way because i think women are trying to reown crone and hag and all these older terminologies because they're magical and wise as we're coming into ourselves and we're blooming into this really creative phase of our lives sort of post early kids post 40 let's say the whole world has got an expectation and it's kind of holding its breath and waiting and i just think if i can help unleash the most creative women out into the world to do their best thing what an amazing achievement that is for all of us you know i just feel like women have so much more to offer in terms of creatively looking at issues and problems and being intuitive and expressively working things out and communicating with people that that perhaps we haven't exercised so well earlier in our lives and i think when we get confident and when we get vocal if we've got these creative abilities and creative sort of juice powering us, then everything becomes amplified. And that's just beautiful. I think that's just an incredible thing. It's unbelievable. It just really fills me up because I feel what you're saying. Maybe we've passed by it in our earlier years, but we're really at this place now where what a difference we can make if we just tap into it, right? With yeah. all the issues. Yeah, there's so many layers of, of issues in the world. And I really love your approach to it too, because yes, climate change is urgent and even social issues are urgent, but yet you still come with it with this like loving, delicate hand of, we don't have to be scared. We can nurture this whole relationship with nature and try to heal, even if it's just one person at a time, at least that's the message that I've gotten from you. And, and it makes you I don't know, for me, then it gives me that permission to take a walk and, and see the thriving part of nature that still is here now that we can touch, we can harness, we can be part of. And especially fun because I get to watch you on all of your adventures on Instagram and you've <laughs> seen some gorgeous places and magic that still abounds everywhere. And so when your eyes are open and you're looking for magic, magic will be there. Talk to us a little bit about your relationship with nature and your relationship with you know, these magical places you get to visit all over the UK, you know, Stonehenge and, and ancient Irish Gaelic sites. It's just like really exciting. Anywhere with stones, I'm there. Anywhere, Anywhere with, with ancient stones. stones. Yeah, so I really think that coming at things, any problems, but particularly climate change problems from a place of fear and scarcity just drives us in, a, in the wrong way. So coming at, coming at issues in an optimistic and inspired way is it allows us to make our best decisions and to feel empowered to take action. So there's quite a lot of work around nature connectedness and the things that enable us to feel both connected to nature and then optimistic and empowered enough to take action for nature. And that's really what I love to do in, in my art and like in my social media and stuff is to, to go out and connect and see these places. Some are on my doorstep, some are literally just around the corner from my house, you know, my local path all the way up to these amazing places like Stonehenge or the Highlands in Scotland or bioluminescent sea locks in Ireland and all this kind of stuff, you know? So it's really about, again, this sense of wonder and beauty, which inspires us to fall back in love with things. And when you love something, you take care of it and you do it from a sense of um, a grounded, inspired, supported place. So for me, if I can help shift people into a more inspired and optimistic state about the world and themselves, 
whether that's through art, through teaching art, through writing, just through my Instagram channel, whatever that is, it puts people in a much, much better, more open, authentic, expressive state in order to themselves go out and make positive change. So that's that's kind of how I see it. And and yeah, when I look for magic, I'm I'm really meaning the magic of connection with the earth and the magic of connection with what might be. So I know in some indigenous populations, they have people who are dreamers and their job is to dream powerful, positive dreams for their people. Wow. It's kind of like, I guess, our, our Western version of manifestation in some way. But the little I know about it is um, what a job. Wow. And why aren't we all doing that? You know, why aren't we all focusing on the power of connecting to that source magic and that source um, energy to create something more positive? And whether that's through doodling something or writing a poem or just chatting to someone or enjoying a walk, you know, just just having that beautiful, inspired and hopeful vision it, as a dreamer. You know, we can all be dreamers. Oh, Let, let's I not let's not, you know, invent nightmares. Let's all dream a better dream for the planet. Yeah. So we all take on that position of dreaming. I like that connection. Like you understand that it could be kind of like manifesting, but it's not a personal like i'm going to manifest a car for myself it's like no. <laughs> i want to dream of a better world i want to dream of connectedness and love love that is abundant and growth and healing health and magic i love your way of connecting magic because i really i love magic like i really feel when i'm open to it i feel it it's an energetic connection but it's not like i'm thinking you're going to snap your fing fingers and you know twinkle fairies that's not the kind of magic <laughs> i mean i would love for that kind of i know it would be cool wouldn't I mean, it like, but, yeah. in some ways coming from the fair and now working in theme parks we all have that like you know young at heart that kind of magic but that's the kind of magic i believe in like that just like when you embody it when you hold the energy in that space the magic will be there because uh where the energy flows you know that's it, you know it's always there yeah it's there it's just there you just have to tap into it yeah just... it, the, the magic is just waiting not even to be noticed its job is not to be like wait for you to notice it it's just happening anyway like on a recent walk up into the peak district which is near me in, in derbyshire there's an ancient moorland and there's some standing stones and on my walk i went over to the standing stones and actually sat and i painted and sketched there outside which was wonderful and i left a little a little crisp a little chip you would say as a little offering in the middle so i kind of did this little respectful thing but that was magical. And then on my way back across the moorland, I saw this murmuration of birds, just like a massive flight of birds just dancing and moving across the sky. And it was just, if I hadn't have been there at that moment, if I'd have taken longer to paint or I hadn't gone that day, or that to me is the magic. Yeah. And the way it lifted my spirit and the way it talked to me about freedom and liberation, I'm, I'm working in concert with people and beauty, that to me was the magic of the day. Yeah oh to me too like i'm just oh, i have my eyes closed at the moment for those who are listening because i see that that those little moments that you come across that is the magic and we are so quick to miss it in our busy lives so how beautiful is that that your whole mission is to be able to connect that really for yeah. for for people in general but for women to like reconnect with all of that you know, like it really can change and shift your whole mental well-being when you're in that Gosh, state yeah. of wonder. Yeah, yeah. And and I think we don't just skip past it in our day-to-day -day lives, but I think even people who are already creating, or painting, sketching, whatever, kind of sometimes we can skip past it in our creative process as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's really easy to sit down um, at your table at home or your studio if you have one and go, right, I'm going to paint some flowers or I'm going to paint that landscape I saw last week. And you haven't even been outside and breathed any fresh air yet. <laughs> and it's kind of like I use nature very much to recharge my artistic process as well. And noticing it and using it as part of um, creating, you know, taking those moments to, to really tap into that. And, and for me, painting and sketching outdoors is a really big part of it, which on my course, Wild Magic Sketchbook is I start each lesson outdoors somewhere and kind of take take people through these lovely landscapes and talk about this nature connectedness before then we even move into creativity because one without the other for me is quite dry and soulless and my theme word for this year is soulful with two l's soulful that is my theme so ah uh, full soulful and i love one of your other sayings that i hear you say all the time and it reminds me and then i forget and this is your whole part about 
even as creatives, we're going to miss that magic if we're not actively looking for it. It's sky before screen, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do love sky before screen. So most mornings, I wouldn't say every morning, but most mornings I will get up, put on my clothes. And before I've had breakfast or had a cup of tea or anything, turn my phone on, I'll just go straight out. And it's just like a 20 minutes around the block onto some green areas at the back of our, our home. And just notice what's going on. Can I hear any birds? What's the sun? What are the clouds doing today? Can I feel any sun on my face? Or is it mm. rainy? How, how, you know, is it dripping down the back of my neck? You know, say hello to people who are going past me. And this whole idea of sky before screen is reground, connect to what's real before you dive into what's digital. Because, oh. you know, we can live such a digital life that we really need to keep regrounding it and coming back to, to, to nature. Um, and to, to get physical connection with the earth as well. Wow, that's really reminding me of like, maybe where I've been a little off track, maybe I am your ideal client, Kelly. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even though that, you know, I've been coaching you for the last year, maybe it's time for us to flip the script and I will let you coach me back into that state of wonder and sky before screen and connection. Because even though I believe it and I do make sure that I get out and go hiking at least once a week and going for walks a couple times a week, it's still not as intentional as I yeah. would like it to be because I really do believe that that's part of the healthy mind, body, spirit is connecting with nature, connecting with people, connecting with just the awe and wonder about the life, what we have right here in front of us. Because you're right, we do spend so much time digitally. And as an entrepreneur, I really don't have much of a choice. That's how I built my whole mm. business. I'm so glad for that. But at the same time, I think I think that's the part that I'm missing that I would be better at my job if I took more breaks to connect in real time and not through just a screen. Which, yeah, and like I think everyone listening right now is probably saying this. They are. They're going to get that. Me too. So <laughs> then you have to just come find Kelly Eric. That makes it really easy. I will definitely be making sure that people connect with you. But I'm not ready to end this conversation yet. What I'd really like to hear is what your experience has been. Now, I know that you've had other teachers and coaches throughout the years, but I'd like to know what it meant to you, like how the journey that we went on, what you learned the most, especially about building a business and, and working in our small mastermind. Yeah, it, it was a definite sort of energy and power shift for me um, when I joined your mastermind. And it was really strange because I'd only followed you a little bit on Instagram for a little time before that. And I think you put out one post and said what you were intending to do. And I maybe emailed you and said, oh, I might be interested. And then before I knew it, I joined and I was in it. And it wasn't because I rushed the decision. It was really serendipitous and it just kind of fell perfectly. And that is also this kind of magic that I'm mm -hmm. talking about, you know, the magic of being open and finding opportunities. So it started in a really open and exploratory way anyway. But then coming into the mastermind with you and with the other people who were there alongside us just kind of shifted it shifted my mindset, but it also shifted something that felt quite core in me. And I, I can't quite explain it, but it felt not just, oh, yes, I've been thinking this, but now I think that. I kind of knew it in my bones. And there's a real difference between thinking you know something and really knowing something. Uh -huh. And that's, I think, where I got to with you was like that level of understanding of something deep in my bones that I really clicked with what my purpose really was I really clicked with who I really wanted to serve and, and who I really wanted to speak to and who I wanted to help empower in the world and I really clicked with how I wanted to express that you know the courses were a part a big part of what we did but then you and I talked about so many other things you know my love for writing and the retreats and in-person events and like I said earlier you know this whole truth bomb that I was an ecosystem, you know, I didn't have to be this one linear thing. I could be this fabulous forest of, of life, of all different things growing as one big organism, you know, as my whole art life or creative life. Um, I think those are the big things, kind of that feeling of knowing and the feeling of expressing it through so many different things, whilst at the same time taking action to focus on making some of those things happen. Yeah. So so you were really great at saying all of these things, but now focus on this because this will get you from here to here to here. So it's great. And I'm a person who loves lots of different new ideas. But where the value really kicks in and where the transformation kicks in is when you use all of those big ideas as a roadmap to your vision and you kind of can leapfrog from one thing to the next to the next. And I think you were such a great blend of practical 
and visionary and you don't often get that usually things tend to be don't they they tend to be like mindset work or they tend to be how to like guides like follow my system and you don't often find things that blend like left brain right brain and I really really valued that from from the work we did together thank you so much that is something that I really strive to that's what I want the most is to be able to you know give that clarity and open up all the possibility while at the same time give actual practical advice of what to do next because I've been in those coaching situations where it's like well what do you think I'm here because I would like to know what the next step is and I can't see it and so my goal when coaching and when mentoring is to give the real life answers of what I've been through what I know works what I think won't work and especially tailoring it to each individual because it's not the same path like you said you have this whole ecosystem of who you are that you're blending into one business model and who would have ever thought like you came in saying okay so do i have to teach art how to and there's all these women who are at the the um what was it at the botanical club that want me to teach them how to make flat flat (laughs) flowers and you're like i can just do that i'm like that is soul sucking not soul fulfilling yes that's not your dream for someone else it might be exactly what they want that's really what they they lean into, but to be able to extract all the elements of you. And I want to thank you because, and this is really important because as everyone's listening, Kelly is the reason that I have chosen the prism as my logo, as my icon, as the, as the symbol of the business, because you gave me this analogy on one of our very very last coaching sessions. And it's like, it like really, that's what hit me in the heart. Yeah, it was perfect. It just, I I do talk a lot in analogies, but the perfect idea for me was you you don't ever come in and kind of solve and and do for other people but you this amazing lens through a new perspective on the world so for me it was very much my creative power shining through your prism so my white light shining into your prism which then you refract into this beautiful rainbow with me and then all of a sudden you go from pure white light through the kelly wind prism and it's like wow look at this rainbow world of beauty and opportunity it was just the perfect way to describe to describe you. And you are transparent as well. I mean, my gosh, you are so blooming honest. When you tell us things about your business and what you've yeah. done, it was like, you are clear, like, you know, a glass prism. So on many levels, that analogy really works for you. I love that. That means the world to me for real. Like, I, I mean, and I do want to be honest because people will hide things so much behind closed doors of what it takes to run a business. And I'd much rather be completely transparent of like, sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes I've made mistakes. Sometimes things go off without a hitch and I do really well. And so we talk about all those details like thoroughly, plus give you, you know, a lot of tools on, you know, how to build a sales page or how to do an email sequence or, you know, just the simple things that it seems like it should be so straightforward. And yes, we can Google it and YouTube it, but the perspective as an artist and what a creative is going to respond to is, different from most of the information that's out there. So I was really happy because I went back today and read your first intake application form and what your goals were. Oh, I've forgotten all of that. Yeah, I guess I should send it to you when we're done. But I love going back and even for me to go back a whole year and see what your dreams were and then how far you've come. I mean, your email list, your social media growing, the fact that you did create a course and now you're working on your second course yep. and all these things that you've accomplished. And I think the biggest part was you really um, honing in on your specialty, your little beautiful ecosystem of a business. But when I read back, I think you already knew what it was. You just had to come full circle and come to the point where you knew it because you said you wanted to be known for nature and creativity the way Brene Brown is for vulnerability or Disney is for ma- magic. And I'm like, here it is. Here it is, it's all coming together as that way of being. And, and, you know, I really do hope that, that people know that they are multidimensional and they can put it all into one gorgeous aligned business that's profitable. So your first course you made, tell us a little bit, let's talk about that process of making a course. And I am going to put the links to this in the show notes, on the description, and even in my Instagram um, post, I will remind people to give it a try and see how they can connect with Kelly better. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was it was interesting because I knew I wanted to do a course that was really accessible and either reinvigorated people who already knew painting and, and sketchbooking or was really accessible for people who were just starting out. 
And for me, doing something that was really technical and process driven in the studio just wouldn't have hit that. And I was kind of like, how do I blend my three, you know, my creativity, my, uh, magic and nature? And Wild Magic Sketchbook was born from that, you know, from my love of being out and about, either painting outside or being inspired by nature. And I kind of knew that painting outside is kind of tough for some people as well. So I thought, how can I make this beautiful hybrid where I go out and take you on adventures and talk to you about perspectives and, you know, which ancestors might have passed here and what's the power of the sun and what are the different elements and how can we bring that together and then bring it back to the studio and create beautiful but exploratory and expressive sketchbook pages with paint and mark making and all these different wonderful tools. Um, and it was such a joy to do. And I, I still I really love I, I have the Facebook group that you can join if you do a course with me. And it's so lovely to see people's comments and, and work that they create and how it's inspired them um, to go on and do new things and try looser, more expressive things as well. Um, but but actually recording it was great because, because I just take out my phone and, and my little tripod and I just go to all these gorgeous places and just yeah. chat about things that I really loved um, and even the closing ritual. So so I like to do some mindfulness wrapped around the lessons, too. So we start with intention setting and we finish with a gratitude ritual and it was spring. So I was sat in a bluebell wood which are, you know, synonymous with fairies and magic anyway. And I'm sat in a bluebell wood talking about how grateful we are for creativity. And you know, <laughs> I kind of had to pinch myself to think, wow, this is my actual life. You know, this is great. This is, yeah, it was, it was incredible. Um, and then on the kind of actually structuring it, building it, writing it, you were such a great help with all of that. But I felt that because I tapped into my passion and who I wanted to talk to and the kind of way I wanted to be creative, it really just flowed as a little mini course I mean it's really affordable as well and I wanted to just kind of put it out there and see if people enjoyed it and overwhelmingly people have loved it so it's been and brilliant to do it was a mega mini course because there's a lot in it <laughs> and you lot. can come away just changed from this one course but the price tag on it it was like what 27 pounds <laughs> I mean, that's not that's yeah, not that's like how much joy it is and I love that's it. like fish and chips on a Friday night it, I, for us Brits you know that would that would be what we would spend that I on. mean everything costs so much now so it's this and it can bring you weeks and months of joy <laughs> yeah yeah and you know like your courses it's online lifetime access so as many times as you want to replay it and revisit things and reimagine things mm -hmm. it's totally open to to keep playing with right and now you also have a new pdf that you just created Yes, I'm really excited yeah. because it's bringing you even closer to the women that you want to work with. Yes, so there's a new course on the horizon which is tapped into this PDF. But if you don't want to take the course, the PDF is just a brilliant resource anyway. So come and grab it. I think you can get it at kellyherrick.com/slash 100 let, uh, numbers. And yeah, I just wanted to. I was inspired by your 100 list actually, and I wanted to come yes. up with a hundred ways that someone could step into their creative life. Now, that's not necessarily painting and art. How can you tap into your creative superpower and unleash it across your relationships, your work, your hobbies and interests, your goals and purpose in life, your health, all of these things. And I just kind of thought and thought and thought of all these ideas and I've just packaged it together along with some supportive wraparound. Of course, you're creative and let me explain. So yeah, 100 ways to step into your creative life. Um, was just brilliant to do oh, yeah. it, it feels like such a lovely thing to give people um, and and people are already saying you know they've tried some of the ideas and I you don't have to try all 100 you could just find one thing that transformed your life or you could do a 100 day project and try one every day I mean you can oh, use hey, it however you wanted to really that's a really good idea seeing <gasps> a 100 day wow. project is coming up yeah there yes that's true it starts, it starts you're gonna go to kellyherrick.com slash 100 and you're going to get this PDF and you're going to be so inspired. You'll have your 100 day project in front of you and Kelly will help cheer you on. See, look, I'm a big cheerleader <laughs> of Kelly's because if there's one thing for sure for me, other people's success brings me more happiness than my own success. So my biggest joy is watching all of you guys just like reach new heights. It's been like unbelievable. I'm like, wow, I, I, I'm like, I knew you were all going to be amazing, but it's just so uh, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it except for that I've coached you all for a year but now I feel like you're all friends and family so it's been just really such like I don't know it's been a it's been an amazing opportunity so much so that I am 
instead of doing this on small scale, I'm opening it up bigger. And I'm really excited about that. Finally, full circle, because I now through helping you, I know my purpose as well. <laughs> yeah. And I just encourage people to explore with you and see where it takes you, because you know, however people interact with you, you offer so much, like so much for people who want to make art or people who want to coach or, um, you know, people who want to uh, coach other people to make art or whatever your business model is. And it's, it's just so brilliant to tap into everything that you have. And like me, you may end up working with Kelly to, to develop a whole creative dream for yourself, or you might just kind of be happy with a downloadable PDF that you've, you've made. But wherever, I think wherever people tap into you as an ecosystem, you get so, so much. I definitely, for those of you who, who ears are pricking up with interest whilst you're listening to it, I would definitely, <laughs> definitely go and explore. Don't say no, say, say maybe, probably, and then see what happens. Yeah, well, thank you for that. All right, I end all podcasts on the same note. I want to know what your big audacious dream is. What do you have on the horizon? What do you really wish would happen? What not maybe sometimes we don't wish, we just put it out into this world and then we make it happen. So let's speak it out loud. Okay, so it might not seem that big and audacious to some of the listeners, but my big audacious dream is to get my camper van and to travel all around Britain and Ireland and paint everywhere and record it all on YouTube and take you all on an adventure with me. I think that would just be the most exciting, coolest thing I could do with my time. So yeah, let's put it out there. I'm waiting. Show. <laughs> oh, so cool. And then maybe if you have some extra time, take the channel over or a, a ferry over and start hitting the mainland of Europe, right? Yes. I want to yes. see what happens when Kelly goes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Kelly, the traveling artist. Back to my roots, traveling the world. <laughs> but see, that's the beauty in it. It's full circle. Yeah, I would watch that show, Kelly. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for everything, for our friendship and for the journey we've been on together and for being on the podcast. And I can't wait to see what happens in the near future as everything unfolds for you. Oh, thank you. It's been a joy. I feel so welcomed by you always. So thank you. <laughs>